really big changes coming at the Ford Motor Company. They're cutting sedan production. The exit ramp over the next couple of years, the number two U.S. automaker will phase out most of its new car models in North America to cut costs. We can't compete with the very best of the ICE or the BEV world by working on battery electrics from 9 and 10 in the morning. A few weeks ago, we bought another Ford, the new low-priced custom line Victoria. You may have observed that the number of new cars coming from Ford has greatly diminished over the past year or so. There are lots of trucks and lots of SUVs, but no normal family cars at all? Well, you're not losing your mind. There aren't any new Ford passenger vehicles at all. Ford shocked the world in 2018 when the automaker announced that it was going to stop making cars. Ford has been cutting ties with all of its sedans and focusing entirely on trucks and SUVs. But why? Join us as we explore the real reason why Ford stopped making cars. Surely enough, the news of a car maker halting the production of cars is an odd one, and it left the whole world startled. Well-known passenger versions like the Fiesta, Fusion, and Ford Taurus were axed after Ford announced it would stop selling sedans in the United States. The sedan was long a staple for Ford. The 1960s were characterized by the Lincoln Continental, and then there was the Ford Galaxy, which was available in countless variations for nearly 20 years. The LTD, Crown Victoria, and Taurus were then introduced in the 1980s. Even Ford's automobiles, namely the Escort, and subsequently, the Focus, participated in rally racing. While all these nameplates came and went, only one remained constant, the Mustang. In April 2018, Ford's Mini Pony turned 54. Since 1964, the Mustang has been in production and appears to be preparing for a new generation of drivers. Before its nameplate is retired, the vehicle will probably undergo a number of further reinventions. For now, though, the Mustang is here to stay. The Mustang was the only car that didn't get the axe, and as of right now, it has evolved into an all-electric model so that it can take on the future before any gas versions start to go out of production. So. What exactly was the reason for this decision? There are a few factors at play here, particularly for the remaining sedan versions. One of them is that Ford is merely conforming to analytical data. The company observed that sales of trucks and SUVs had increased significantly compared to sales of small cars and sedans. However, the most significant variable was the pressure to jump on the EV train with the rest of the world as companies push toward competing with the likes of Tesla. Former Ford CEO Jim Hackett, speaking during a call regarding the news, said that Ford was going to feed the healthy parts of our business and deal decisively with the parts that destroy value. For Ford, dealing decisively meant canceling sedans in the U.S. altogether. Kumar Galhotra, president of Ford North America and vice president of Ford Motor Company, spoke with Ford Authority executive editor Alex Luft, and he said, the sedan segment itself has been in decline for a very long time, and that decline has been accelerating over the last few years. Galhotra continued, Our industry is very resource intensive. We have to create a particular product and the factory to build it and all the tooling and our suppliers that can run into billions of dollars. The question then became, in that environment of a finite amount of capital, where do we want to invest that capital? Do we want to invest it in a declining segment, or do we want to invest it in a growing segment? Every model year, sales of these vehicles decline as people increasingly prefer trucks, crossovers, and SUVs. Every vehicle has a price point that is based on the expectation of a certain number of vehicles sold each year in order to spread out and write off the costs of design, development, testing, and marketing to bring the specific vehicle to market as well as the tooling, labor, and material costs to build the car. As traditional sedan sales continue to fall, the volume no longer supports the investment and cost of maintaining the vehicle without drastically raising the price, which would only drive sedan sales even lower. So, Ford decided to focus on SUVs, trucks, and other multi-purpose vehicles because they are in high demand and can be sold profitably. Chrysler also did the same thing, discontinuing the mid-size Chrysler 200 and the small Dodge Dart so they could use the factory area to produce more Jeeps and Ram trucks. In doing so, they made more money in 2021 with less overall sales. 
The auto manufacturing industry is very risky, and it has fierce rivalries, high capital requirements, and an erratic customer base. It is not a business for the faint-hearted or non-gambler types. So Ford decided to take the gamble, and it has paid them in the long run. Take the Ford Bronco, for example. Since its introduction for the 2021 model year, the sixth-generation Ford Bronco has been one of the most popular cars on the planet, steadily eroding the sales of its rivals despite experiencing numerous production problems. Ford had to stop accepting orders for the 2022 model year due to demand rapidly exceeding its production capacity. The vehicles that were produced are now selling for significantly more than MSRP, and there are no deals or incentives to be had. The Ford Bronco Raptor followed suit and sold out rather quickly for the 2022 model year, while the regular model was also one of the top 20 fastest-selling new vehicles in 2022. There's also the F-150. This vehicle was the ideal pickup truck when it was released, and today it still sells like crazy. Ford reported that it sold more than 640,000 F-Series vehicles throughout the entire year of 2022. It has been the best-selling truck in America for 46 years running and the best-selling car overall for 41 years. The impressive statistic is, if you take all the sales of F-150s and spread them over a year, Ford sells one of these big trucks every 30 seconds. The only car that sells more than the F-Series is the Toyota Corolla. But despite its popularity among corporate buyers, Ford's F-150 remains popular because it continues to be available in a wide range of variants. A two-door, four-door, short bed, long bed, hybrid motor, gas V8, and of course the all-electric F-150 Lightning are all available for purchase. Additionally, it is available in a number of luxurious special versions, including the Raptor, Tremor, and even the opulent Platinum model. The larger F-Series trucks, the F-250 to F-750, can tow so much you need a CDL to drive them with some trailers. Ford has also gone a long way to keep the trucks up to date and relevant by giving them an aluminum body and fuel-efficient turbocharged engines. This time-tested bestseller has become even better and has an aluminum body, turbocharged engines, a hybrid drivetrain, an all-electric variant, and the latest in Ford technology. If you need a work truck, the entry-level XL has everything you need and nothing you don't. But as you move up the trim ladder, you'll find a growing list of desirable features and, of course, price tags to match. The Spirited Tremor model is ideal for exploring the wilderness, while the upscale Platinum and Limited trims pamper occupants with Lincoln-level luxury. The company is also now focusing all its efforts on EVs and hybrid vehicles, with probably more of a push toward EVs particularly now that some regions of the world are debating possibly outlawing the sale of gas-powered vehicles in the future in an effort to combat global warming and other environmental issues. As a result, Ford will ultimately bring sedans back to the market. They simply won't be the gas-powered cars you've been used to for so long, with the exception of the Mustang. Ford doesn't look to be finished with internal combustion engine vehicles in general just yet, as there are still some internal combustion engine and hybrid truck and SUV models that haven't hit the market yet. However, it's fair to say that the company won't be spending much more time in the internal combustion engine market. There is just too much pressure to evolve thanks to the popularity of EV vehicles. Now it's just a matter of seeing who will be the first to offer inexpensive EV options that fill in the gaps for the $20,000 to $30,000 range so that they can be more broadly available to consumers and not just those looking to spend a lot of money. What do you think about this issue? Let us know down in the comments section. If you've watched it until now, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing to Velocity for more videos about EVs, Tesla, Ford, and the latest car news.